I'm Chris Joseph and this is the story of rescuing Sarah Ann. She was towed all the way up to Queensland and back without even going for a sail. I towed her back to Tasmania and I've been doing her up and here's a bit of the story of looking back at the restoration to getting her in the water. During the last month or so of the Sarah Ann project, I just became so overwhelmed with the need to get her on the water that I didn't have any time to publish any videos. So these videos might come out slightly out of sequence, but I do want to cover the construction phase. Transporting the motor down there out of the boat was going to, always going to be problematic. So I wanted to install the motor in the boat and I needed to get that done before I hit the road. So we had to drive 2000 kilometers and I wanted it properly anchored in and properly mounted. So I installed it and then um, I've had to do some of the um, maintenance issues on it while it's actually in place, which has given me a bit of practice for how it's going to be in the future. When I took some of the things off, um, the, the water manifold here and the exhaust manifold there, there was quite a lot of deterioration in there. Not, not so much so that it's the blocks rusted out or anything like that. There's a bit of corrosion in there, you would expect that but um, essentially it's pretty solid. Uh, however, the actual manifolds themselves uh, needed to be cleaned up thoroughly and remounted, and there's a, a, an earlier video on that subject, so I won't go into it now. But uh, I took the thermostat out and I tested it, and it's working perfectly, so I put the original thermostat back in there. Um, then I had to, then I had to start building a, uh, a wet exhaust system. Now some people, had suggested to me that the best thing to do was not to have a wet exhaust system, just to have a dry stack. And that was how it was actually with the original um, Simplex engine that was in here, it was a dry stack. But that there's a lot of heat just coming from the engine itself, let alone from a, a really hot exhaust going through the boat. So I intend spending a fair bit of time camping in this boat. And I don't want that heat uh, coming from the exhaust. I went to a local company, or local at that time, up in Brisbane, called Polyflex, and they were just tremendously helpful in putting together a coupling system. Uh, the shaft had a little bit of wear on the end of it, uh, and, I, and they came up with a, um, a clamping uh, you know, type of system. It just clamps in with the Allen screws. Not a real fan of Allen screws in a nautical environment. Uh, the reason is that those screws are hard, and if they do corrode, then um, they, they can actually crack when you open them and then you've got a really big problem on your hands. You've got to cut, cut stuff off. But anyway, as long as I remember to hose that down after each use, so that uh, any salt that's on there, hopefully won't be getting too much salt in that part of the boat, by the way. But if I do get salt in there, I want to make sure that it's washed off and that nothing's corroding. And uh, Matthew, thank you very much for your input. Um, I'm told that the tank needs to be uh, above the intake for the engine so that it's gravity fed uh, and that it will be difficult to get it to prime, if not impossible, if it's below the motor. Once it's primed, apparently, it doesn't matter, but uh, you need to have that high. So what I've done here is just install the original tank, which is a petrol tank, and uh, converting it to a diesel system and I've been able to raise it up a little bit and I took the lifting hook off here which was in the way and I ended up with sufficient room that I can install that tank back in its original position. I was very very pleased about that because uh, my other alternative was to take that tank and put it way down the, in, the, in the quarter berth there um, creating a, a number of different issues. Um, moving weight back in the boat is not something I want to do. I'm actually trying to get as much weight forward as I possibly can. And um, taking the feed back further is you know, possibly going to be another issue. But it also takes up room. So you no longer have a nice quarter berth there where you can poke your legs down there to sleep. So, or storage or whatever. So this is the ideal spot for it. And it fits, it fits beautifully. It's going to be a little bit of woodworking involved. Now this was the original engine housing and um, it's, uh, it's going to have to be modified quite a bit. But this will just give you a little bit of an idea about how it's going to look. And, uh, 
I'll get some. I've got some nice hue and pine, and uh, I'll put a nice hue and pine step on here. So, interestingly, you know, it's almost as if it was made for it. But there are a few adjustments that have to be made on that. It's going to sit just a little bit lower. And then what I thought was I'll create another step, which you'll sit up here. So it'll be one, two steps. This one will be a narrow one and a wider one with a nice piece of hue and pine featuring um, components from my wife's uh, hue and pine bed that she graciously donated to the project. I'm told that if you have a nice high cranking uh, battery, which I, I got a, a, a big powerful battery so it should work, um, that you actually don't need to manage the decompression on this because you can start it with, uh, with the compression lever off. I, I wouldn't be exaggerating to say that um, when you do something and, uh, and video the process, um, it takes about two thirds of your time up setting up cameras and, and filming the process, uh, let alone the post-production work producing the videos, as it does actually getting the job done. Technology. I'm an early adopter, but uh, I have to say it took me probably 20 years after these things were invented before I actually started to use them. Uh, it was when I went back into my floor sanding for a couple of years that um, I was working on building sites and I was watching the way builders use these just continuously and didn't take very long and I was in there, got myself one. So when it comes to trimming off plugs, there is nothing that does it more efficiently. Um, you do it with a chisel and get the grain a bit wrong and next thing you know you're drill, drilling it out and putting a new plug in there. So this is, in my view, without doubt, the best way to trim off plugs. I'm going to turn my attention now to this front part of the hatch. So there's a fashion piece across here which is scribed down into the curvature of the top of the cabin top and uh, it's about half inch uh, King Billy pine. So mm, quite brittle. Uh, in some ways a piece of plywood would be a good choice there but I just don't like the look of that. So I'm going to actually replace it with uh, another piece of King Billy.
Now there's an issue here with these because the things in me there are not, but I've taken this fashion piece off here, which doesn't make a, a full weather seal. Uh, but when you pull this back, any water that gets past there, in theory, is going to hit this piece here, which is a deck beam, um, and run back downhill, which is quite likely when you're sailing, a little bit of water might get through. Uh, but the issue is not when you're sailing. The issue is this is a trailer sailor. And uh, the reason the word trailer comes first is it spends a lot of time on the trailer, on the road. So if it's raining and you're getting down the road at 100 kilometres an hour, 60 mile an hour, um, then there's a fair bit of force and that water will get driven and, and it's going to end up in the, in the cabin. Years ago I was doing a furniture design course and I had to make a butter churn as one of my projects. Now part of the butter churn was some uh, brass components which is a crank handle and a shaft and a bearing and they turned out to be absolutely perfect for the all important throttle control. up I was a weird kid See, no matter what I ever did all the normal guys would never quit poking fun at me mama tried to make me regular she said the lord above was testing her as I grew more and more peculiar unashamedly when people say that I'm a strange duck I tell them maybe so and so what sure I'm a little different from you but I don't really see the issue so don't go frittering away your sympathy Ain't nothing wrong with me I consider it good luck That I was born a strange duck When someone tries to make a wise crack Well, they don't matter, I don't give a quack Rolls on me like water off a duck's back What you think about that? People say that I'm a strange duck I tell them maybe so, but so what? Sure, I'm a little different from you, but I don't really see the issue. So don't go frittering away your sympathy. There ain't nothing wrong with me. I consider it good luck that I was born a strange duck. A strange duck makes a strange pond, and I'm the one out of 441. You can have yourself a strange crew. And just do what you want to do, do what you want to do, do what you want to do. What you, what you wanna do. say that I'm a strange duck I tell them maybe so but so what sure I'm a little different from you but I don't really see the issue so don't go frittering away your sympathy ain't nothing wrong with me I consider it good luck that I was born a strange duck and I consider it good luck that I was born a strange duck I have to confess to a fair bit of anxiety prior to the first launch concerning the motor it wasn't just about whether the motor would run, it was about whether I could control it smoothly and uh, turned out it worked beautifully, but it was all to do with getting the controls just right. It's expected that after a shakeout uh, cruise like that, there's gonna be a list of things to do, but it turned out there's very little. Optimizing the system for raising and lowering the mast and um, the system for launching and retrieving the trailer are all things that make a big difference when it comes to getting her in the water efficiently and quickly. The less time it takes to rig the boat and to launch the boat means more sailing time. Because she really hadn't been sailed much at all in the past, a lot of these things have really never been sorted out properly. She's pretty well designed from the point of view of fittings and hardware, but um, once you get her out in a, a decent blow, then you start to discover that there are parts of the system that really do need some work and refinement. And so far everything's going to plan. I don't know if that's cause for concern.